Now that we've reached the end of the overflow in arithmetic and uh, MIPS uh, topics, uh, we're going to be moving on to subroutines. But before we properly start to suss out how subroutines work and uh, how we use them properly, I'm going to give you a little example um, of a simple subroutine that doesn't require much, by the way, of uh, knowledge about how they work to run. So, what is a subroutine? Well, a subroutine is kind of like a function or a method. So, depending on the language you are, and they're called different things. Java calls them methods, Python calls them functions, Haskell calls them functions. Depends on where you are, what they're called. Uh, sometimes they're called stored procedures, and that's what we can think of them are as. For example, in uh, previous lectures, what we did was uh, we did a lot of looping through characters to count the length of a string. Now, you could store that as a procedure and then just have a little function that you call and run without having to, every single time you use strings, find the length of it. Today, we're going to do a very simple one because we don't want to tackle the topics of the stack, uh, trashing registers, anything like that yet. We're going to talk, tackle that next week. Today, we just want a brief overview of how we can use these, how they work, and uh, that's about it. I just want to motivate the topic today. So let's see how we do it. What I want is a little um, program called my function, which just prints out a little message to say we're all done. Okay, so I want something like uh, a message, which is an ASCII string. Make it null terminating that just says all done, like that. And I want to print that out at the end of some message. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a slash in here as well, actually, so that we can print a new line so that it doesn't run into whatever was there beforehand because we're going to use this in a different file. So let's write this function. So we do dot .text. Now we need a label. We need somewhere to be able to latch on to this function. So we'll call it my func or my fins. Let's change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to load immediately into v0 for going to load the address into a naught of message and we're going to do a syscall and that's it that's all that this is going to do it's a very simple bit of code if we ran this right now all we would get is a little printed string all done and that's what we want now what i need to do next is because i'm going to call this in the middle of another file of code so I need to find a way to get back to the program counter that's previously there because normally what we do is we just jump back up but I don't know where the jump point is going to be necessarily in this because I don't know what label will be in whatever file I choose to use this function. All I know is that I need to get back to where I started and this is where we're going to use two very important jumping instructions. We've got jump and link and what that does is it sets the program counter into the register RA. So the program counter, if you don't remember, um, is something that counts through every step of the program. It's represented by a machine code number and just steps and increments of four picking out machine code instructions and executing them as it goes. And the program counter tells us where in the program we are. So jump and link sets the return address register, this RA over here. This is one we haven't encountered before, but we knew it had a special meaning. So the jump and link, when we call it, will set the return address to be equal to the program counter immediately after where the jump and link instruction was called. So if I know that, then I know that in the return address, there is going to be a value which I can long, uh, latch onto. So what I'm going to do is use jump register. Now this sets the re uh, program counter to be equal to whatever is stored in a given register. So let's say that that's RA, the return address. And this will say, okay, the program counter, once we've executed this code, is equal to whatever is in RA. So let's save that. Now, I've got another file over here. This is uh, one of the examples we did in the lecture. I'm just uh, going to use it. It prints out 80. We want it to say 80 and then all done. So I'm just going to use this as an example because we could do this in any file as long as they're in the same folder. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dot .include my func .asm. Now, you'll have seen this before because this is how the tests work, and that's what the test suite is. The test suite is a bunch of stored operations that run to check your code. Now, we use .include. That just takes the code from that file and puts it into this file for us, so we don't have to copy and paste it over. We say .include, and that will take all of the code that we want from that file into this file. So that's what happens when you run the test suite. It takes all of the code from the test suite files, puts it into your file, and then runs that code. So 
we're just saying that you can look into the my function here or the more magic num.asm file can look into the other folder of my func and use the code that's there. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to use that jump and link instruction that I mentioned earlier and I'm going to use my func because that's the name of the label that I used in here I called it my func so jump and link will jump to here and it will store the return address over here to be equal to the program counter at this point in the file. And then what I'm going to do is load a media into v0 value of 10 and syscall and that will just terminate my program for me because I don't want it to run on and try and import or run this code down here. I want to end it before it uh, tries to execute that code. So let's assemble this and see what happens. So if I play it, there we go, we get 80 and all done. So we've jumped and linked the program counter, which is quite a big concept, so I'd really like you to spend some time thinking about that. We've set the return address to be equal to a specific point in memory where this code is executing, and then we've jumped back to the register containing that value. So what would be a nice thing to do, actually, let's step through this program. So it's down here that we use the jump and link my func. So let's uh, step until we're down there. We don't need to worry about any of this other code in here. This is all just... Um, an example we've been through before. Okay, so just before I run the jump and link function, what you should be looking at is the return address. So the moment it's set to zero over here, track, there you go, I can highlight it slightly. Um, so it's set to zero. The program counter at this point is 400 or 50, and the next instruction should be 54. So we should be jumping back to 54 once we've executed the jump and link my func. So let's see what happens in practice. Click off that. So we go to jump and link my function. We've not done anything yet, so let's execute that. So the return address gets set to 54, which is the next instruction in memory up here after the jump and link instruction. You can see this is all of the code of my func. This is the, co the code that we wrote in the my func file. This isn't the code that was in the more magic number file, so we've imported that code over. And then after the jump and link, we have load immediate, which is the next instruction, and that's what's stored at RA. So if I play through this code in uh, more steps, we should execute the code from my func, and then we should jump back up to this load immediate v0 of 10, and then we should um, pr terminate our program. So we do load dress, and we do the syscall, we print it out, and then we jump to the register RA, which is the program counter, and then we do the syscall again, which terminates the program. So this is just a rough introduction to subroutines about how you might want to use them in future. Um, a few of you wanted to know how the test suite in, uh, worked in earlier weeks. I uh, decided not to do that then because we need this idea of subroutines and uh, how they work uh, before we can tackle that. We'll maybe get onto that in the next week or two. Uh, but for the moment, this is just a simple idea of how you would use a, a subroutine. We've got a lot more to cover when it comes to subroutines, like uh, that's where we get more of the meaning of the registers. As we said, that the S registers are saved temporaries, the T's ones, uh, the T registers are not, and that the A not are function arguments. That's a lot of um, conventions that we haven't actually tackled yet because we haven't had the concept of subroutines to use. So that's everything I wanted to cover today. Don't worry if not all of this makes sense to you yet. I just wanted to get the idea of being able to import functions, how we link the program counter so that we can go back to where we were in code, that sort of thing. Um, I just wanted to get those ideas across to you. You don't have to understand everything about fun um, subroutines or what we tackled today. This was just a gentle introduction to show you the use of them and a vague way idea of how we use them. So that's everything for today. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please do feel free to get in touch. Thanks.